Hello everyone, back to you into today's first video. We're going to have a look at the ECWF 30 day uh, model for today's first video. Haven't done this uh, since before Christmas, so um, ECMWF 30 day again is back for the first time in uh, probably around three weeks, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, we're going to have a look at that, have a look at temperature precipitation anomalies for the whole of Europe and also for UK too for the next um, four weeks. That will take us into the early part of February, I think. Um, and uh, so that's the first video update, uh, what we're going to be doing. And then the second update later on will be the regular week's 10 day video with all of the usual features. Uh, at the Hungarian Met Office for this, so a big thank you to them for supplying uh, the charts. We can't show you mean silver pressure or 500 millibar heights, but you can get a rough idea of what model is forecasting from its temperature and precipitation anomalies. So, let's get on with it. And we're going to begin with week two. Uh, of course, it's week one for our forecast period, but it's week two for the year of uh, 2020. Uh, it's covering the period from the 6th through to the 12th of January. And a very mild scene across many parts of Europe, with one or two exceptions. So the mildest uh, temperature anomalies are actually across the west of Russia and into the far east and northeast of Europe and over to Scandinavia. Here, temperature anomalies are going up to 6 to 10 degrees above average. Um, other parts of northern Europe are sort of 3 to 6 degrees above average, including uh, like Germany and also Poland and also the low countries into northern parts of France and also into southeastern parts of England. So uh, very, very mild temperatures across many parts of uh, northern, central and western Europe in the week ahead. Other areas are sort of 1 to 3 degrees above average, that includes southern parts of France, the rest of the UK, and also, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the Republic of Ireland as well. Down into the Mediterranean, it's a cooler scene down there, except in the central bowl of the Med. So around the Côte d'Azur, and then going into the central bowl of the Med, temperature anomalies there are a little bit above average. But on either side, actually it's cooler. So much of Fr um, much of Spain and Portugal, we see the temperature anomaly is close to, or possibly in one or two areas, a little bit below average. And then more definitively, from Italy over the Adriatic into the Balkans, and then down into southeastern corner of Mediterranean, temperatures there are around one to three degrees below average in some areas. Looks so quite cold, for example. In uh, Greece, although Turkey up towards the Black Sea is a little bit warmer. But it's definitely a colder scene down through much of the Med, and particularly in that eastern and southeastern part of Med, going northwards in towards the Balkans. It's a cooler scene there, but otherwise very, very mild scene uh, across many parts of Europe this week. Precipitation-wise, we look like this. So quite unsettled in the northwest. Above average rainfall uh, for the UK and for Ireland. Again, how, how often we've said that over the past few months. Going northwards in towards Scandinavia, we see that uh, much of Sweden is a little bit drier than average. We've got uh, Norway there looking very substantially wetter than average, however. And then in this extreme southeastern corner, is a little bit wetter than average there. You will think with cold and average, uh, temperatures certainly over mountainous regions there could be a little bit of snow down there in the southeastern uh, Mediterranean most parts of Europe though are drier than average obviously high pressure is dominating many parts of Europe so from Spain and Portugal down in the southwest over towards Ukraine in the far east and all areas in between really coming out um, with drier than average uh, um, conditions in the weekend from the 6th through to 12th of January. So it will be quite a dry week for many parts of Europe away from the extreme northwest and also extreme southeastern corner. And they go through to week two. This one takes us from the 13th to the 19th of January. No changes, uh, really. So, uh, again, very exceptionally mild across western parts of Russia and into Scandinavia with temperature anomalies of around uh, 6 to 10 degrees above average. More widely, across much of northern Europe, we see temperature anomalies of 3 to 6 degrees above average. Um, out in the west, we've got the UK, Ireland and France closer to average, but still above, around uh, 1 to 3. 
uh, degrees above average. And then through the Mediterranean, again, we see it's a somewhat cooler scene. We do actually lose those below average. Uh, below average temperature normals that we have in week one, in week two, from the 13th to the 19th of January. <coughs> Excuse me again. But overall, it does look as though so, um, we're closer to average. But overall, it does look as though much of southern Europe is uh, is relatively um, uh, relatively nearer to normal. Let's not, let's not say cool, but certainly relatively nearer to normal uh, in this mid-month period. Whereas the warmth is in central and northern parts of Europe with, again, very substantially above average temperatures, particularly around here in the far north and northeast of Europe. Precipitation-wise, as it has been, it continues to be the case that the far northwest is a little bit wetter than average. Above average precipitation for Norway, above average precipitation for Ireland. Some parts of the UK also having above average rainfall as well. These are the exceptions, though. Most parts of Europe are dominated by a warm area of high pressure that brings a lot of dry weather with it. So, uh, once again, we see that from the far west of Europe, from like France in the west, over towards um, west parts of Russia, all areas in between, uh, either a little bit or quite significantly drier than average during the middle part of January. Mild and dry uh, weather dominating. That's week three, and these are extraordinarily grim charts for anybody who wants cold weather, not just in the UK, but for most parts of Europe, actually, as the winter heat wave goes on with temperature anomalies again from Scandinavia into western Russia, 6 to 10 degrees above average in this area. More widely, we're 3 to 6 degrees above average across most parts of Europe. Absolutely no change whatsoever. So I say if this was... If this was like July rather than January, this would be the most extraordinary heat wave uh, uh, that we've ever seen across uh, all parts of Europe. But, um, of course, it's January, so it's not going to be that warm. But we are talking about week after week after week anomalies of 10 degrees above average through many northern parts of Europe. It's quite extraordinary, the warmth that we're seeing uh, this winter. Out in the west of Europe, so we're not as warm as it is further eastwards. Nevertheless, temperature anomaly is one to three degrees above average. No sign of anything cold except in this far southeastern corner again from the Black Sea down into Turkey. Possibly some parts of Greece could be a little bit colder than average there. Turkey could be actually quite cold. Uh, I mean, we're talking about temperature anomalies for Turkey of around one to three degrees below average relatively widely. Uh, actually, so um, snow could be quite common through parts of Greece, possibly into uh, some parts, could be quite common through parts of Turkey, possibly into some parts of Greece as well. But that's the exception, an extreme southeast corner. Otherwise, it really is a very, very uh, mild sea. Maybe it'll be one of those cases where. There's more snow uh, in Greece than there is in Moscow. Uh, and in terms of the um, precipitation anomaly from the 20th to the 26th of January, so it continues to be dry and average. This is quite a dry uh, January coming up through many parts of Europe. In the far northwest, again, Norway, uh, also Iceland. Haven't mentioned Iceland, of course, so far in this update. And western parts of uh, the UK and Scotland and Northern Ireland. Most sort of areas could be a little bit above average with rainfall. But otherwise, again... Most places are looking drier than average through Europe. So mild uh, and dry really sums it up for many parts of Europe during this January. And then we finish up in week four. Week five of the year, it takes us from the 27th of January to the 2nd of February. The uh, sea of orange and red goes on. We do lose the very intense red colours. They're pushed back into um, northern Russia. Little area is still 6 to 10 degrees above average. Again, though, widely we're seeing temperature anomalies of um, 3 to 6 degrees above average with these dark orange colours. Uh, and even across west of Europe, we're one to three degrees above average. This is a very, very mild, uh, uh, very mild winter, very mild January indeed. I think we'll be seeing records tumbling all over the place for this January, not just in the UK, but likely for many parts of Europe as well. It could well turn out 
to be the hottest January that we've ever seen uh, across most parts of Europe. So um, really, really grim times for anybody who's hoping for cold weather during January. There's absolutely no sign of it whatsoever, except at extreme southeast, of course, as I keep saying. And precipitation-wise, it looks quite unsettled here for northern Europe, actually a little bit more compared, a little bit more unsettled compared to the earlier weeks. So uh, from Ireland and the UK in the west over towards the Baltic Sea, Overall, it is above average for precipitation. Most of that's going to be rain, of course, due to how mild it still is. Snow probable over over mountains. Um, so Norway could be OK, particularly mountainous areas. But most places uh, seeing rain with that, possibly even onto the Russian border. Uh, further south, so we're looking at uh, drier conditions there, but not as dry as it has been in previous weeks. Um, but it's certainly not as dry through southern parts of Europe, wetter across northern parts of Europe as we're ending January. What will be, I think, quite a historic January from a warm perspective. Um, as, as, as we end that, it looks uh, drier in the south and wetter up in the north. Those are extraordinary charts, absolutely extraordinary temperature anomalies for this January. Uh, I say records will be tumbling all over the place, I would have thought. And um, it's uh, going to be a very, very grim month uh, for anybody who wants something uh, a little bit more seasonable. But there we go. We can only go with what the weather charts and uh, the weather gives us. And that's what it's giving us for this January. So uh, that's it. But, uh, the um, ECWF 30 Advocates are back uh, and we'll be doing this every Tuesday now, or most Tuesdays, uh, over the next few months. Uh, come back later on for the week's 10-day uh, video update and uh, we'll see what's going on then. Uh, that's going to have all the regular features, of course. But that's all for now and thanks for watching.